So how do you structure multi-platform apps, both from a project perspective and from a code perspective for the maximum reuse? I have some experience with that. I've created an app called Voice in a Can, which brings Alexa to your iPhone, your Apple Watch, iPad, Mac, Android, uh, Tizen, Galaxy Watches, and more. And I'd like to share with you the journey I took and the, the, the way I've structured my code and my projects. I built it using something called uh, Xamarin from Microsoft. Although ironically enough, none of the, although I'm going to show you lots of platforms here, Windows isn't one of them. Uh, so I started on iOS. I wanted to bring Alexa to the Apple Watch, but I started on iOS because it was easier that way. And I knew that there was the platforms shared quite a lot in common. So I managed to get the iOS version of the app working. I could tap a button and speak and Amazon uh, Alexa would respond. And it's not as easy as it sounds. You have to use HTTP2, you have to stream directly from the microphone, so you have to do kind of very low level audio stuff and you have to stream directly to the to the uh, speaker. I got it working and I wanted to let you log in in that way. So I wrapped the Amazon um, login with Amazon library um, for iOS and made that accessible from Xamarin from iOS. Once I'd done that and kind of kind of got the basic thing working, I factored out all the non-iOS code because Xamarin lets you create cross-platform apps and you can uh, factor out your code into something called a, a net standard library, which uses a kind of a standard set of, uh, of APIs that are available on many, many platforms. So anything that was non-platform specific, I put into this voice in a can core project. I also decided to go for a uh, Xamarin Forms user interface on the iPhone. Didn't use that everywhere, but for the iPhone I did. Xamarin Forms lets you define your user interface using a platform uh, agnostic way mechanism. So you define using XML buttons and labels and all kinds of, th of, of UI elements, and they get rendered on the platform in native user interface elements. I then tried to get it working on the Apple Watch, and I, I, I was kind of delighted at how much code could be shared between the iOS and Apple Watch version. And I was, uh, what I did then was factor out all the common code between the Apple Watch version and the, uh, the um, iOS version into this Apple Shared. I then created an iOS widget so you could use, you know, invoke my app from, from the widget. And although the ordering, the timeline isn't, isn't actually correct here, I did eventually go on to create a Mac version and was able to share, again, a lot of code between the watch version, the iOS version, and the Mac version. And um, I also created a login helper for Mac to, so that you could start the app at login. It, it's kind of, uh, it was just necessary. So I had this version that ran on iOS, um, Watch OS and Mac showing a, a common code in this Apple shared project and um, putting the uh, all the non Apple specific stuff into this core. So once I had this core, I then went to Android again using Xamarin and got an, a, an Android version working. Um, and I was also able to get it working on uh, Android Wear called Wear OS. And again, I factored out all the non-platform specific, or no, sorry, all the Android code that could be shared between Wear OS and Android, I factored out and into this Droid Wear library. And this kind of low-level code is the stuff for talking to the microphone, talking to the speaker, so setting alerts, doing the HTTP2 networking. Once I'd done that, I went on to Tizen, and Tizen, which is what um, the Galaxy Watch runs, uh, the S3, they all run, um, uh, Tizen and Tizen supports Microsoft.NET, so I was able to create a Tizen uh, wearable uh, uh, app. And again, uh, I followed the same platform of using the uh, Tizen shared code to factor out the code between the Tizen wearable version and what may eventually be released as a Tizen um, TV and mobile version. And again, all of the code was shared. All the like I would say, 80 to 90% of the code is in that um, core library. And then finally, I created a test library, of code which I can use as part of my continuous integration, although frankly, there's not much in there at the moment, but I could put a lot of stuff in there. And I hope one day, once I finish kind of cranking away at all these various apps um, to do that. So I'm planning on creating a load of these videos, quite short, I hope, that talk about you know the nitty gritty. Let me know what you think, uh, if this has been useful. Thanks.